Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for April 3rd. April 3rd is the 93rd day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 94th in leap years, with 272 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is electroencephalograph. The word electroencephalograph, sometimes shortened to EEG, is a noun, which means it's the name of a thing, and that thing happens to be an apparatus for detecting and recording brain waves. It's very similar to the word electroencephalogram, which is also a noun and also goes by the shortcut of EEG. But an electroencephalogram is the tracing of brain waves made by an electroencephalograph. One of the things I like about words is that when you get some exposure to them, you can begin to recognize their sources. Let's take electroencephalograph for instance. You have electro, which means having to do with electricity, and then encephalo, which has to do with the brain, and graph, which has to do with an instrument for recording or to write or express by written characters. In the case of an electroencephalogram, the first two parts are the same, electro and encephalo, and gram means that which is written or marked, so something that's written down or written on paper. So an electroencephalograph is the machine that reads the brain and writes it down, so to speak, and the electroencephalogram is that little strip of paper that shows the representation of the brain waves drawn, written, or marked on that piece of paper. In similar manner, a telegraph is a machine by which one can send messages, and the telegram is such a message printed out on paper. A seismograph is a machine that detects and records seismic activity or movements within the earth, whereas a seismogram is the strip of paper on which it's been recorded. Back to today's word, though, electroencephalograph comes to us as a scientific term composed from Greek and Latinized Greek. First known use of the word electroencephalograph is in 1934. Electroencephalograph. Today's word electroencephalograph was requested by YouTube viewer I'm Pancakes MC. Thanks, I'm Pancakes MC. And if you have a word you'd like to see in this Word of the Day segment, drop it in the comments. We'll take a look at it. And with that, this is the birthday of French Dr. Pierre Bretonneau, born April 3, 1778. He was a pioneer of modern medicine. In the days before we understood about germs, he recognized that there was something out there that could cause disease and the transmission of disease from person to person. For lack of an established term back then, he used the term morbid seeds. He identified typhoid fever, named the disease we know as diphtheria, and distinguished between scarlet fever and diphtheria. He came to be convinced that disease was caused by bacteria, but he didn't have a microscope, so he couldn't quite prove his theory. He also discovered that the same illness might manifest differently in different patients. The other thing that Dr. Bretonneau is known for is that he performed the first successful tracheotomy. Dr. Bretonneau lived to the age of 83. This is the birthday of actress, singer, and activist Doris Day, born Doris Mary Kappelhoff in Cincinnati, Ohio, on April 3, 1922. I think we probably mentioned her some when we talked about her son, the singer, songwriter, and record producer Terry Melcher, back on February 8th, and I'll leave a link to that episode in the description. Back to Doris, though, she started out as a big band singer in 1939, released some records beginning in the 40s. Didn't take long for Hollywood to notice her, and her film career began with the 1948 movie called Romance on the High Seas, and went on to star in dozens more movies. Had her own sitcom, The Doris Day Show, from 1968 to 1973, and a good many other TV appearances as well. When her husband Martin Melcher died, 
She was shocked to learn that he had committed her to several television shows and specials without talking to her about it, and that he and his business partner and advisor had squandered her earnings, leaving her deeply in debt. A terrible thing to discover at such a traumatic time, but she trudged on ahead and fulfilled the commitments and sued that business partner for legal malpractice. Took her several years of court battles, but she finally prevailed in that matter. After that, she got involved in animal welfare activism and established the Doris Day Animal Foundation. Doris Day passed in 2019 at the age of 97. Doris Day. The Flying Nun was a fantasy comedy TV series about a convent of nuns. This particular order were large, starched headpieces called cornets as part of their habit. Sister Bertrille, played by Sally Field, could fly when the wind caught her just right. This inadvertent ability came in handy, but also had its complications. <laughs> Pretty amusing TV show, The Flying Nun. The show was based on a 1965 book called The Fifteenth Pelican by Terry Rios and aired 83 episodes from September 7, 1967 to April 3, 1970, beginning with a one-hour pilot episode. I was able to find a playlist on YouTube that contains 13 episodes, and I've linked that in the description if you'd like to check it out. The Flying Nun. Now, in case you're curious about what I might have talked about for April 3rd in a previous year, I'll leave a link for you. Today's song is Sentimental Journey by Doris Day. Written by Les Brown, Ben Homer, and Bud Green, the song was released in 1945 and became Doris Day's first number one hit. She had a nice, clear voice and a lovely, lilting way of delivering a song. Sentimental Journey by Doris Day. Link in the description. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page that's called No Really. <laughs> You can also find me on Rumble, a bit shoot, and Odyssey. All those links in that description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. This is the birthday. I didn't get that. Could you try again? I wasn't talking to you. And from the Life is What Happens When You Make Other Plans department. <laughs> oh, where's your microphone? Oh, get your microphone. <laughs> what is it with you and this microphone? Okay, here we go. Maybe we could get a little camera back up there again. Right there. Little bitty tiny camera. Make it small. Right there. <laughs> You're here with me live this morning as I stumble through. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. My my apologies here. I thought I had it all ready to go, and I just didn't. I guess so. I thought I was ready to go, and my apologies for the for the hiccups and the baubles. <laughs> See, that's all stuff that gets edited out in the edited versions. <laughs> well, I have a lot to edit today. Cacophony is a sound. <laughs> Cacophony is a noun that you got to read it the right way. Don't alienate people who can be helpful to you. Flinging happiness all over the place. All right. Back to work. I think we got it this time. <laughs>